Hey guys, welcome back to Never Alone Homestead. My name is Cammie, and I'm out here in the garden taking a look at my corn here. First time I'm growing my corn, so I'm really super happy that I could get it this big. I would have never dreamed of getting this big to be in the first time. As they say, it's so hard to grow corn. Now I've been randomly, this is my third year of picking corn. Uh, you know, taking it, pulling a, a, a ear and trying to see if it's ready. I noticed at the top that it can grow some more. I believe the kernels can grow some more. So I tried to pick the one that has the uh, brown silks onto it. And I've also been feeling down here to see if it's ready. And I've been looking right there to see if it still has some green. But my focus is more, is the corn developed? It really is a super beautiful corn. I actually went sort of into the middle. And uh, so I don't think it's going to be very long. We've had a lot of rain. And with that rain, actually, it's, it's steaming hot here in the garden because it was raining all day yesterday, just about. But I've got my silks are brown. So far, the three ears that I've opened up, I didn't see any worm damage. So that's that's good. That's that's super good. And uh, what I plan on doing is maybe going into the middle and seeing if the corn is b bigger or better. I mean, bigger or ready and better as far as size wise. So it looks like it's not going to be long that it's going to be time to harvest. And those ears at the top do not feel too bad. But I will say in a couple more days, I'll be ready to uh, pull some of this corn. Some of the ears are not ready, but I'm just loving this corn. So I thought I would just get stalks, you know, maybe get four or five feet tall. And that's got to be at least nine feet tall up there. I wish I had a ladder so I could measure it. The watermelon is doing phenomenal. I'm trying to get through here with the sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes are doing phenomenal. Watermelon, I was told, was always harder to grow. The last I counted, we got a lot of rain, so it's really taken off. But the last I count, and I'm trying to keep these sweet potatoes kind of pushed back a little bit, but um, but it's getting where it's getting kind of hard. But I counted seven watermelons that I could see. So those down there are starting to take off. Those went through transplant shock. Steaming hot out here in this garden. It's like a sauna. But I just want to show you my corn. Now I can feel like if I can grow corn, anybody can grow corn. You want to start out with an easy variety, not some kind of foreign variety you don't know nothing about. And this is an old timer type um, corn and I forgot the name of it at this, at this moment. But it's the corn that everybody knows about. It was back in the day. This is pretty much all the corn you will plant. You, know, you have the field corn and you have your sweet corn and uh, they say it's the easiest but they do say that when it's harvest time that you need to go ahead and get it off that's why i keep watching it so it won't be you know uh starchy i guess you know that's what they say starchy or once you pick it you got a certain amount of time to um take and you know put it up before it turns starchy back in this area back here this corn is not ready but i have tasted some of this corn and it was super sweet and that's exactly what i'll be doing with this taking a, a bite of it testing it out that way i can definitely see the depths of the, the the kernels there but right there at that top is telling me it's not long what's amazing to me so far i don't have any worm damage but even if i did we, i grew up growing corn um we had field corn and i remember taking the 
1800 corn grinder that was in a box and grinding the corn for the horses and I remember seeing ear, uh, worm damage on the end which you just break off and it was no big deal once it was dried out but even with regular corn it's no big deal you just chop the end of it off and then you continue on keeping the rest of it and putting it up whether eating it fresh or uh, canning it or putting it in the freezer they say putting it in the freezer is the best well guys thank you so much for watching just did another ear testing on my corn it kind of looks like a couple of days i might go in there and pull some of it even though the ends is like that don't want it to go too far but i'll know more with my test uh corn here with the thickness of these kernels how many days i'm assuming probably maybe three days three four five days and a lot of this corn will be ready the garden is doing super great Barry harvest at least eight five gallon gallon bushels of tomatoes canning spaghetti sauce uh yeah and it, taking some of them off there so the tomatoes will grow um i'm hoping bigger bigger the okra starting to come off everything is just starting to jump here we went through a lot of wind and it's a big rainstorm and everything held out really good i did have some of my eggplant topple over my peacock purple holes there's my king of the garden it's really grown tall it's got to be at least well wow, almost 12 feet tall um and it fell over some but i think it the bushes were so big i think it'll do great everything looks great still keeping up with the bug pressure more bug pressure than i've ever had tomatoes are just doing just totally phenomenal nice big size tomatoes i've harvested some big ones and uh, just got finished yesterday making more spaghetti sauce and now i've got enough of that i think that i'll be trying to figure out what else in the future will i'll be doing with all these tomatoes because there's definitely a lot of them on here some of them are starting to turn red I just love my sunflowers. First time I grow on those, and I, I just love them. I call them the king of the garden. But there's some big tomatoes in here. Super big tomatoes. I'm hoping I'm getting that in the camera. Because the sun is uh, really shining here. The disease on the tomato plants are not that bad. Yep. You get some blight, it's hot, it's humid, and that's the way it is. But as far as all the wetness and hot and humidity, I can't complain. The disease has not, you know, hasn't been as bad as I thought it was going to be. So the squash, I planted some more squash. I can tell they'll be on their way out soon. They're only producing small ones now, but I've got some on that area over there that uh, hopefully will grow, and I'll do get some more squash. A little bit of break from squash will be great. This is what I've been dealing with. I have to come through the garden. These Japanese beetles, hopefully I'm getting it in here, but they will fly fast, and they will tear up your some of them are flying they will tear up your garden you have to come in in the morning time and the evening and even periodically through the day because they will get up under the, these branches out of that sun and destroy your leaves in the greenhouse i'm still having the slug issue i, I do everything i think i got it under control and and then it they, oops, it just blew off um you have to be fast with them too because they know you're after them thought i got it on patrol and then uh yeah they just come back i never had that issue before but it's really honestly right aggravating i got a little bit more okra here uh, star david and clemson spineless the butter beans are doing phenomenal 
so far. I wish I had planted two rows of uh, black eyed peas. What I'm doing, to the, the okra is blooming, so it's, it's, with this heat and humidity, it's going to be 